Hello students, welcome back. We are doing lesson six for 1R reading level. Um, 1R is one read and that is the beginning part of second grade. So welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to see you again. Um, for today, our strategy is that most three syllable words are root words with affixes. Now an affix is considered to be the prefix or of course the suffix. Now, if you're a little confused about what a prefix is, it's um, what is placed at the beginning of a root word, and then the suffix is placed at the end of a root word. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have an example of a prefix, okay, it, which is placed at the beginning of a root word. So we have the word disappear. Now the prefix is in the pink color, which is dis. Dis would then mean not. Okay, so the word itself disappear would mean that it's not appear. It's, it's not there. So disappear. Say it. Good. So again, our prefix for here is dis. Now, with that being said, in contrast, um, the opposite part of this would be a suffix, which is placed at the end of a root word. So for example, bigger. Um, which would be used, the ER is our suffix, and notice how it is at the end of the word bigger. ER, used during a comparison description. That dog is bigger than that dog. Okay, now, we're gonna play a little game of identify the suffix um, ER in the following words. We have here, hearing, cared, bigger, smaller, being, amazes. I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds and you're going to identify there are two words with the ER suffix and you're going to identify them now. Go ahead. Excellent. Look, I underlined it for you. So the words that have the suffix of ER is bigger and smaller. Let's use them in a sentence. Okay. The cat is bigger than the caterpillar. Okay, now we're also gonna try putting the word smaller in a sentence. So the ladybug is smaller than the tarantula. All right, notice how again it is used to compare, um, in this case, we're comparing animals or insects. Okay, all right. Now today we will do the following. You're going to learn what adverbs are and focus on the suffix of L-Y. So that'd be pronounced Lee. You're gonna play an adverb pattern spelling champs game. And then we're going to do a guided reading of Mr. Putter and Tabby Pick the Pairs chapter one. Now, we're also gonna do a preview. We're gonna look at the cover. What did you notice? And then you're also gonna do comprehension questions and vocabulary. And then I'm gonna also assign some homework. Now, adverbs are used to describe how or how much. So the how, how does she run? She runs quickly. How much? How tall is the building? It is extremely tall. How fast does the jet go? It goes incredibly fast. Okay, now for adverbs, again, they are used to describe how or how much. You're describing the verb. The verb is the action. Okay, so for here, we're going to do the following. There is going to be a chart in the next slide. You're going to look for pattern. What do you notice? How does this suffix L-Y, Lee, change the meaning of the root word? You're gonna fill in the blanks using logic and the patterns that you notice. Here's our chart. Now we have the root word on the left over here, okay? And we also have the root plus suffix which would then equal the adverb. So for example, slow become, and now if you're going to do it where it's the root plus the suffix of ly, you're gonna then have it where it becomes the adverb. The root for here is slow, okay? And the root plus the suffix, the root with the ly suffix would then become the adverb 
and it changes then to slowly. We're gonna go through the chart. When you see a blank, we're gonna say the word blank, and then you're gonna go and see if you are able to fill in the chart with the logic and patterns that you have, um, that you have and that what you have noticed. The logic you have and patterns you've noticed, okay? All right, so root, slow, root plus suffix equals adverb slowly. We figured it out. Quiet is our next root, and the root plus suffix part is blank. Now, blank, friendly, blank, lovely, normal, normally, blank, carefully, sudden, suddenly, sad, blank, simple, simply, blank, gently. So we have to figure out what goes in those blanks. I'm gonna give you a little pause break so you can look at the chart and try to think to yourself, what would go in the blanks? Remember, the suffix of ly, we, would then create the adverb. And adverbs are the how or how much. All right, see how you did. So we're gonna go through where I'm gonna say the root word first, and then I'm gonna say the root plus suffix, so then therefore we'll also identify the adverb of the root word, okay? All right, so the first one we have is slow. Then it turns to slowly. The tortoise walked slowly. Quiet, quietly. She talked quietly in the library. Friend, friendly. My friend is very friendly to me because she shares her prance. Love. Lovely. Oh, wow. That was such a lovely song you just sang to me. Great job. Normal. Normally. Normally, I would wake up at around 7 a.m. and then I eat my breakfast and then I head to school by taking the school bus. Careful, carefully. She carefully unwrapped the gift that her mom gave her for her birthday. Okay, sudden, suddenly. Suddenly, there was a loud noise coming from over there. Sad, sadly. Sadly, she was not able to go to the party because she had to finish her homework. Simple, simply. Um, simply, I just make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich by first putting the peanut butter onto the bread slice. Um, I use a knife to put the peanut butter on my bread slice. Gentle, gently. She gently picked up the little kitten so that it didn't get hurt. All right. Cool, you then have it where we just went over um, with the ly suffix, we created adverbs. Good job. Okay, do eight jumping jacks, go ahead, do that movement break. And three, two, one, start. Wow, you're doing such a great job. Four more. Excellent, all right. We're gonna go through word attack strategies as a review because soon we're going to be doing our guided reading. Now, if you see a word that you do not know, you're gonna follow these steps. So we have it where you are going to first stop. If you see a word that doesn't look right, you have to stop and sound it out or try to see how it would make sense. Now you're gonna look at the pictures and see if they can help give you any clues as to what the unfamiliar word might be. Then you're gonna say the first letter sound. You're going to reread, go back and try again. Then you're going to try to say the first two letters that you see. Let's look at some examples. Okay, so this word here, we don't know what it is. So you're gonna say the first letter sound. Puh. Say it, mm-hmm. Now 
you can also try it where you're going to blend. So you're going to say the first two letter sounds that you can identify. In this case, it's P and L, so we know that blend would be pull. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to cover part of the word. What we have left is an A and an N. Well, we're going to chunk and look for parts you know. So A-N makes a what sound? Wow, that's impressive. You're right. It makes an AN sound. Okay, we're going to think of words that look the same and that rhyme. We know that M-A-N is man, and so maybe that can help with the pull AN. Pull AN. I wonder what word that is. You're going to try a different sound for the vowel if you are using the wrong vowel sound. There's long vowel sounds, there's short vowel sounds. So pull on, pull and, hmm, I wonder what word that is. If you said that that word is plan, by the way, you're correct. So good job using your strategies. I'm proud of you. So again, this is your word of text strategies chart. And now we are going to have it where you're going to stand on your leg for 30 seconds so we can start um, and dive right into the next part of the lesson. So go ahead. Okay, stand on your left. How about, yeah, stand on your left leg for 30 seconds. Are you on your left leg? All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Good job. All right, we're going to move on. Okay, so what we have here is that this is going to be our next part. These are the comprehension questions that you're going to have um, to try to think about, okay? So what was the first chapter about? What are the story elements, character, setting, plot? What do you know about Mr. Putter? Support your answer with evidence from the text or from the illustrations. And what was all the excitement in the backyard? All right, here's your guided reading. Mr. Putter and Tabby pick the pairs, chapter one. So look over here at the um, cover. Who's Tabby and what might be the problem? So this book is by Cynthia Ryland and Arthur Howard. And so I'm going to give you a, a second to look over here at the cover. What, again, who's Tabby and what, what might be the problem in this story? All right. So as you read or as you follow along, rather, with the text from chapter one, you're going to look and see about this chart of story elements. Complete this in your student portfolio, please. So story elements. Characters, who are the characters? Setting, where does the story take place? And plot, what happens in the story? Okay, we're going to click on the link. We're going to be listening now. She will be up the um, text, so she's gonna read it to you, and then she's gonna hold the text up. As she holds up the text, that is your turn to try to read silently to yourself what you just heard her read to you. Okay, and again, this is chapter one, and we're going to listen to what she has to say.
Okay, excellent job. What we are going to focus on now, you have it where we're gonna look and um, discuss who are the characters? What was the setting? And what was the plot? In this case, of course, where was the setting? You're correct, thank you. Okay, so for here we have it where, this is what I observed as I was following along with chapter one. See if what you wrote in your student portfolio or if you used your binder, just make sure and see if it matches my responses. Story elements, the characters, Tabby the cat and Mr. Putter. The setting was fall in Mr. Putter's backyard. The plot, it was fall and juicy foods were growing in Mr. Putter's backyard. Mr. Putter was dreaming of different delicious foods, especially of pear jelly. What? Now, Mr. Putter and Tabby went to the garage to get the ladder to pick the pears. Good class. So Tabby is then the, you got it. Tabby is a cat. All right. Here we have vocabulary from chapter one of Mr. Putter and Tabby Pick the Pears. We have it where the chart is um, categorized. So there are suffixes, words with suffixes, words with three syllable words, and tricky words, and vocabulary. So suffixes, um, what we have for that is a suffix is the um, ending part of the word, of course, the root word. So, Juicy, growing, stuffed, dreamed, loved, followed, picking. Now for three syllable words, we have tomatoes, turnovers, cinnamon, favorite, and excitement. Now, for the next part, we have it where it is tricky words. So we have season, garage, and cider. Now, vocabulary, we have a word there, and it is pronounced among. Now, among means surrounded by, okay? So, for example, wild strawberries hidden among the roots of the bushes. Among. All right. Now, we're going to review the words that we have seen um, or heard from the story that we just read from chapter one about Mr. Putter and Tabby, his cat. So suffixes, juicy, you say it. Good job, growing, you say it. Good job, stuffed, you say it. Excellent, dreamed, you say it. Good job, loved, you say it. Good job, followed, you say it. Excellent. And picking, you say it. Wow, good job. Okay, I'm gonna say a suffix, and now it is your turn to say what words have a certain suffix. Okay, here we go. E. Wow, if you said juicy, you're correct. Okay, the suffix I N G ing. Good job, the word growing. How about this 
suffix ed. Wow, good job. What's that? Oh, you're right. There is another ing one. It is down at the bottom. It was hiding, picking. Mm -hmm. So there are two with the ing suffix. Good catch. All right, moving on. We have it where there is the um, suffix ed. So, wow, how many do we have? Four, good job. There's stuffed, dreamed, loved, and yep, followed. Hey, three syllable words. We're gonna clap them out and we're going to say them. So, tomatoes, clap it out. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Yep, three syllables, good. Turnovers, you say it? Excellent, let's clap it out. Turn overs, you say it? Good, three syllables. Cinnamon, 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 say it? Mm-hmm, awesome. Favorite, you say it? Excellent, let's clap it out. Fay for it, Fay for it. Excellent, three syllables. Now, what about the next word? <clears throat> yep, excitement. Okay, say it. Excellent, we're gonna clap it out. Excitement, excitement. Three syllables, good job. All right, tricky words. Season, say it. Excellent. Garage, say it. Excellent. Garage is a little attachment to um, a, a residential place. So an apartment might have a garage, like a community garage, um, or a house might have a um, garage that's attached to the house. Okay, so some people for garages, depending on the size, some garages are big enough um, for a car to be placed inside of it. Or of course, in this case with Mr. Putter, um, he had it where he was um, storing his ladder, and that's where him and Tabby went to get the ladder for the pear picking. And then cider, say it. Excellent. Vocabulary, again, we have the word among. Say it. Excellent. I'm so proud of how well you guys are doing. Hey, this is your homework, okay? First, on a piece of paper, write the suffix L Y Lee on the top. Notice how I attach right here an example of what I want um, your paper to look like. Then you're going to write as many words that you hear that use the suffix L Y Lee on that paper. So if someone is saying, you know, in conversation, if you hear someone from your family use a word or some or an individual on a TV or a video game. I, I mean, if you hear the suffix L-Y, Lee, you're going to um, have that light bulb go off and go, aha, that is a suffix of Lee. That word that I just heard uses the suffix um, Lee, and I'm going to include it on my list. And then this is going to be submitted into your student portfolio or of course your student binder um, as well for this lesson six. So there are two main um, activities that you were to do to submit um, for lesson six. The first is that you're going to do the story elements. So you have to identify who are the characters, what, um, well, excuse me, where is the setting and what is the plot from chapter one of the chapter book we read with Mr. Putters and Tabby the Cat. And then you are to complete the homework, which is provided here on this slide for you to reference, um, that you have to identify any words you hear that have the L-Y, Lee suffix, okay? You guys did such a great job. I'm so proud of what I saw. Excellent work. And I'll see you guys next time, okay? Keep practicing those suffixes.